and takes two more efficient ones. And then the right time the dynamics up to 310 seconds and use the small initial gear change to break the cement. And then we use some other parameters such as PBXC. First we looked at the kinetic energy energies and also the protection of energy surfaces. And here I also show some snapshots of the trajectory. But there's all kinds of interesting things going on. For example, that the ligands are acquired kinetic energy almost constantly, while there's maximum in the kinetic energy obtained by the whole core. And actually, this kind of phenomenon was seen in the case of dynamic studies of a pair called load cluster. So this operation should make some sense. And then we also noticed that the, the ground state comes quite close to the first excited state after some time, which is yeah, happens to be due to the decrease of the gold gold gondola. And finally we see that the dynamics is quite complicated, so the structure after at the end is very distorted. Due to the due to having different types of ligands, not just the two of them gold or <coughs> So we calculated linear response calculations in the AMS trajectory. And our first finding was that the, actually the three first excited state, if we calculated, were energy are very close at the beginning, but they start to separate after 100 seconds or so. Is that observation and then since we wanted to get some info about cooling sense we need to calculate some kind of transition probability and for that we used oscillator thing which is kind of at least related to emission somehow and then we find a <coughs> mechanism for the increased oscillator strength in the beginning by looking at different orbitals and in this case it turns out that most of the changes were occurred in Lumo and especially in the phosphine groups. So it's we go carefully to see that the charge starts to accumulate from the PLMs which is connected to the increase in oscillator strength. Turns out, if you look very carefully, it turns out that 
uh, the Austrians receive a charge from the gold atoms, which makes sense if we remember the previous slide. And then we remember from the previous slide that the oscillator strain uh, in the end of the simulation increased, and we see something else interesting happening, uh, which is the atom to charge in the gold core. So the charge of the gold atoms is pretty much the same until about 150 seconds, while in the end it's completely different. So what can we actually conclude from all these calculations? Well first, the beam at our system seems quite simple. The diamonds has quite complex features with the even without interaction. And then from the charge transfer study we found out negative ligand charge transfer during the first 50 seconds. And the conclusion is that the accumulation of charge around phosphine atoms is going to increase in transition probability. So we could go back to the luminous properties, we could suggest using stronger electron accepting ligands or in the phosphine ligands. And then the other conclusion is the asymmetric charge at the end. So we could suggest that this kind of mechanism coupled to increase oscillator strength might explain some movements and properties in the case of larger polar clusters, which we cannot study with real space care and studies. For, ex for example, we know that the Luminescence is enhanced when some uh, uh, iodides are attached to gold clusters, and this doesn't charge observed here might be related to that. Okay, moving on to my next application, which is stopping on high energy layers in routine. So here the idea is that when we bombard materials with ions, projectile can lose energy either to the nuclei of the target or the electrons. And the latter process is interesting because it's non-adiabatic. So for, to study that, we need air dynamics. And in general, at the initial description, the air stopping process is typical, but here we show that air best dynamics can provide just that. Study 
the depot energy as a function of nuclear charge, I found that uh, it postulates, which might seem a bit weird, but actually this kind of phenomenon has been observed in experiments previously, so these results also very good. Okay, then we move on to heavier projectiles, in this case lithium. And actually, for these calculations, we used a so called lithium pseudoatom, which means just improving the one state in creating the setup. But this actually has a huge effect on the electron stopping, so we use the standard frozen core setups which is the nuclear <coughs> here, just bad mismatch of the experiments. While if you use equal one states in the project, uh, the agreement improves tremendously. And we also looked what happens if we include uh, three graphene layers instead of one. So the energy here is stronger graphene layer. And found that actually there are some differences at high energies, but it's generally the yeah, devil's energy doesn't depend so much on the number of layers. And when we look inside the simulations and compare the, and calculate the difference between the gains this obtained using the three electron lithium and then the lithium with one state fruit. And I found that there's actually, we didn't get these good results by accident. There's actually some things going on with the density. The difference may localize at the, around the impact point here. But there are also, it's, the difference seems to propagate more or less around the whole system. Okay, and then when we looked at ionization uh, by calculating the integrating the density around the project uh, after it went kind of through the topic. So, well, uh, as you can imagine, the one I stayed frozen, we have a semi ionized project, but nothing, nothing really happens. Well, the project I might have picked some. Might have uh, picked some charge from the target or something, which explains the small differences here. But if the input the one is, yeah. Oh, oh okay. 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 four minutes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm getting, getting close. Okay. And while if the input the one states, you see that the ionization of the projectile increases at higher, towards higher energy. And from the previous slide, you remember that actually this increased ionization is connected to increase, increase in deposit energy or stopping the power. So it's from this point of view, it's also important to include that one state explicit yellow. Like blue blues that I control here. Like yeah, Moses. Uh, 
number of layers is the way that the energy as a function of number of layers. Maybe you could find some interesting trends. But it actually turns out that the energy doesn't depend so much on the number of layers after the first few ones, which means that the electron structure project start changes a bit the collision of the first few layers and then processes pretty much unchanged. Yeah. Propagating on an upper 
your surface there then. <coughs> on the, of those states. Then you probably fall into one of them and then it's okay. And I think with yeah, this yeah. stuff it's kind of okay. It's just basically generated with error based dynamics that yes, kind of and then yeah. you follow with this linear response and then everything is Yeah, we actually, well, we actually covered the bit compare this linear response error system difference between the potential and the surface. And it was pretty much the same. So that would mean that it's just one state. 